Hey guys, you may have heard that macOS Catalina was just recently released and with it 32-bit app support for macOS was dropped. This means that apps such as Adobe CS6 and up until recently Steam were unable to run on macOS Catalina. A lot of people have been circumventing this by installing macOS Mojave alongside, alongside macOS Catalina on their Mac computers. For people like me though, I only have 256 gigabytes in my MacBook, which means that I don't have a lot of room for sharing two operating systems. And I already had a hard drive that was running bootcamp. So I was thinking that it would be great if I could do what a Mac hard drive normally does for bootcamp, where it shares Mac OS and Windows on the same drive. It's not that complicated a process, and I was able to figure, out, figure it out in the span of a day. I have it on this hard drive here, which is a 240 gigabyte SSD. I would recommend using an SSD for this just because they're a lot faster and more powerful. I do have this extra scary looking HDD though that I'll be using for this tutorial. It's 500 gigabytes and if you do have a larger capacity SSD, I would highly recommend using that. But for what I'm going to be using my external operating systems for, I'm not going to need more than 120 gigabytes on each partition. For this you are going to need an external hard drive that can plug into your Mac through USB. I have a SATA hard drive inside here with a USB adapter in the casing. And for what I'm going to be using in this tutorial, I built my own casing for a SATA hard drive which you might be able to see in there. And this is just a USB adapter that I used some electrical tape to bind together. You are also going to need a USB drive, I would recommend something higher than 16 gigabytes. And for all the software I'm going to be showing in this, I will provide download links down in the description or I'll explain in the video where you can find them. We're going to plug our hard drive into our Mac and we're going to get it set up in disk utility. Uh, to get to this, you can just press command space and it will bring up spotlight search and you can look up disk utility. Um, I'm already in it. So what we're going to do from here is we can see we have this hard drive selected, the 500 gigabyte. With it plugged in, we're going to press erase and most of what we have here doesn't really matter. You can name it really whatever you want. Format, we can just leave it at Mac OS Extended. All of these are compatible, which is really just what matters right now. And we're going to use the GUID partition map. This is important. We're gonna press Erase. And now you can see it's done and it's prompting us to use it as a backup drive. We're just gonna press Don't Use. So now what we wanna do is we wanna to go to Partition and we're going to create two partitions. The first one is going to be called the name of our Mac OS operating system. For this example, I'll be using Mojave. And we're going to want to set this to APFS, the Apple file system. You can choose to allocate however much space you want to this hard or to this partition. I'm going to use 250 just for the sake of the example. Hit plus, and now you can see we have Mojave, which is in the APFS format at 250 gigabytes, leaving this other side with also 250 gigabytes. We're going to name it Windows 10 or just Win 10 and just for the sake of being universally compatible since we will need to plug this into our PC later I'm going to be using XFAT. It's also 250 gigabytes so we're going to press apply and partition and it may take just a moment we're going to look, go ahead and let it do its thing. Alright you can see now that it's finished it's prompting us to use the Windows 10 partition as a, another time machine backup. We're going to not use it. Now that we're done, we can see here we have Mojave and Windows 10, two partitions that are each 250 gigabytes or 249.9, doesn't really matter. Uh, we can see over here we have Mojave, which is in the APFS file format, or partition format rather, and this one is in XFAT and this is Windows 10. The format doesn't really matter over here as long as it can be read by Windows, which is what we'll be looking into later. With the hard drive set up, now we're going to go to our web browser and we're going to look up the macOS Mojave patcher from DOSDude1. You can just download it from here. We're not using this to actually patch Mojave, but we're just using it to download the disk image. And I've already got it downloaded, so I'm going to just open that. And we're going to run this program, the macOS Mac Mojave patcher. And then we can select open again. Now. If you have a Mac that's already running Mojave or Catalina, it will tell you that the device is natively supported by Mojave, which it is, so we're going to just press OK. And what we actually want to do is go up to the status bar up here, and we're going to press Tools and download macOS Mojave, just like it said on their website. And we're going to go ahead and download the image. I'm just going to go ahead and download it to my Downloads folder. 
and now we're just going to have to wait for this to finish. Now that the macOS Mojave installer is downloaded, we can go ahead and locate that. I have it saved in my downloads folder. We're going to right click and show package contents and switch to list view. We're going to go into the contents folder, resources, and we need to find this file right here, create install media. Now we're going to go to disk utility again, and we're going to plug in our USB drive that we're using as a bootable installer for Mac OS. And for this purpose, I'm just using an empty 64 gigabyte flash drive. And then we're going to go into terminal and we're going to type in this command. We're going to type sudo space, and we're going to go into here, copy, create install media. You can do this just by copy and pasting or by clicking and dragging into the terminal window. It will copy the entire link. Then we're going to type hyphen hyphen volume space. Make sure that the volume has a lowercase v. And then we're going to copy the mount point right here and we're going to paste that at the end there and what that's going to do is this command will just create as the name implies an installer media on the flash drive which is identified here we're going to go ahead and press enter and it's going to prompt us if we want to start we're just going to hit y for yes and while we're here we can go ahead and open up boot camp assistant go to action download windows support software and these are the drivers that you'll need to use Windows on your Macintosh. While this is running, we can go ahead and open up the Boot Camp Assistant, and then we're going to not continue, but we're just gonna to go to Action here and download Windows Support Software. It's going to prompt us to save a folder called Windows Support, and you can choose wherever uh, you prefer to save it to. Um, I've already saved it to my desktop. Uh, we won't touch this for now, but you just need to make sure you have it downloaded and it can take a while, so it's good to start it earlier. B drive is done being set up. We can go ahead and close out all of these windows here. And as long as the Windows support folder is finished being downloaded, we can go ahead and restart our Mac. Now the Mac is shut down and we have both our hard drive and our Mac OS installer USB plugged in. We're going to power the Mac back on while holding the Alt key on the keyboard. And you should see a screen that looks like this. You can see right here, it says install Mac OS Mojave. This is going to boot from the USB drive. Now you can see our Mac has finished booting to the Mac OS installer. We're going to go ahead and open up disk utility and we're going to locate the hard drive. You can see we have the Mojave partition right here. So we can go ahead and close out of disk utility. Now we're going to go into the Mac OS installer Gonna hit continue, agree, and agree. And you can see here the Apple file system partition labeled Mojave, the 250 gigabyte partition on our hard drive is available to have Mac OS Mojave installed to. So we're going to hit install and it will take a little while to get this set up as well. And now we have Mac OS Mojave installed on our Apple file system partition on our hard drive. So this is pretty much the halfway point for this process, even though we're really more than halfway there. Um, really all that's left now is getting the Windows partition set up and I'm going to go ahead and walk you through that now on my Windows PC. Now that we have the Mac OS partition of our hard drive set up, we're gonna go ahead and get started setting up the Windows partition. And this part is actually very easy. I have my 500 gigabyte hard drive plugged into my desktop now running Windows. And you can see here, I have the Windows 10 partition selected. This right here is the Mac OS partition. We're just going to go ahead and right click, format. We're going to choose NTFS, which is the Windows file system format. We can leave the volume label the same as Windows 10. And we're going to go ahead and continue to format. It should be ready now. You can see here it says it's in the NTFS file part, file format. Now we're going to go over to this tool called Haslio Win to USB. We're going to select our Windows ISO file. For the sake of this, of this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and use the standard Windows 10 Home. I'm going to hit Next. Now here it's going to ask us to select the disk we're going to use. Uh, if you have multiple plugged in, you might need to cycle through before you see the one with the Windows 10 partition. Uh, but you can see I've only got one plugged in, so it's going to be this one right here. 
um, and it's very self-explanatory from here. Uh, as you can see, we have the EFI system partition already on here, and that's made when you format the hard drive with Mac OS. So we're gonna select that as the EFI system partition, and we're gonna select this as the Windows 10 partition. You can leave installation mode at legacy, hit next. And then this is going to take quite a while, but this is really all there is to the process. So in a sec, I'll go ahead and show that Windows 10 is able to boot and Mac OS is able to boot once this is finished being set up. So now we're gonna power down our Mac and we're going to plug in our external hard drive into the USB slot. We're going to power the Mac on and hold the Alt key. You'll hear the Mac OS boot up chime, and then you should see a screen that looks like this. You can see I've got two options for booting. One is EFI boot and one is Mojave. We're gonna go ahead and boot to Mojave for now just to demonstrate that we are able to boot to Mac OS Mojave from the hard drive. Now there's no way to easily demonstrate that this is on Mac OS Mojave as far as I'm aware, but you can see here we're on the welcome screen. Uh, we are able to go ahead and set this up and it won't do anything else to the hard drive. It's gonna be super easy to set up from here. Um, now let's go ahead and reboot and I can demonstrate Windows booting up. Now we're back on the boot screen. We're gonna select EFI boot to get to Windows. And you can see now Windows is booting up as well. And that is pretty much it for the setup. Besides this, we will also need to install the bootcamp drivers, but since I'm not going to be setting up Windows, I'm not going to be doing that right now. To set up the drivers, you're gonna use the Windows support folder that we downloaded earlier from the bootcamp utility. You're just going to run the setup.exe file inside that folder, and it will install all the drivers that you'll need to be able to use Wi-Fi, uh, maybe updated display, all of that on your Mac as well. Besides that, there's really not much more to the process. Other things to note is I have noticed that during the Windows setup, occasionally I do get the blue screen of death. Uh, I've found that just rebooting um, a couple times and continuing with the setup process usually gets rid of it and it will continue to boot as normal. We didn't get a blue screen of death here, but while setting up my main external boot device, on an SSD, I did end up getting two or three blue screens of death, which were also resolved by just rebooting the computer and booting back into the Windows partition. Hopefully this tutorial helps some people. I don't know how many people are going to be needing to install two partitions on their external hard drive. I just figured with the drop of 32-bit support in macOS Catalina, there might be some people looking to install Mojave on an external hard drive. I also didn't want to lose Windows support on my external hard drive, and I definitely didn't want to have to carry around two external hard drives with me, one for Windows, one for macOS. So I figured settling with this would be a satisfactory solution.